new member shout out to KJ Wolfboy, and super shout out to member and patron Patrick Mai. And holy, <laughs> we have a third video sponsor, Croy the Salty. In Universe 8, or the Realm of the Frost Demons. After a hard-fought battle, by impossible odds, the remaining heroes of Earth have Vegeta, the Prince of all Saiyans, on the ropes. As he attempts to crawl back to his space pod in a bid to retreat, Krillin approaches him, wielding Yajirobe's sword. Growling, the invader killed his friends. He vows to avenge him. Unable to move, Vegeta can only look on helplessly. Die! No! Wait! Me! Vegeta! Killed! Brutally decapitating his foe, he heard his friend's plea too late, asking if Goku said something. But with nothing that can be done, our hero brushes it off, muttering it wasn't very reasonable anyway, leaving the executioner confused. Minutes later, Bulma and the others would arrive to deliver Aiden the only way they could, retrieving the bodies, as well as Gohan, Goku, and Krillin, coming up with a game plan to resurrect the others while heading to the hospital deciding to venture to planet Namek in search of their Dragon Balls in order to bring those back lost to the Saiyans. While Goku had to stay behind to mend his much more serious injuries, Bulma would accompany Earth's most two competent warriors. Though, a wayward scouter happened to pick up on their plans, and the Galactic Emperor Lord Frieza would take interest in these wish orbs as well, intercepting the gang on the alien world. Upon landing, they quickly discovered they weren't welcome as a pair of soldiers would render their ship immobile within minutes of arriving. The ruthless Frost Demon slaughtered all in his way in his search for immortality. Dodoria and Zarbon, his right-hand men, were even more powerful than Vegeta. And as for Frieza himself, he was indescribably worse. But finally healed, thanks to some timely grown sensu beans, Goku dashed into space, but wouldn't arrive for another six days. Meanwhile, Gohan and Krillin had already blown their cover in order to save the life of a Namekian child, barely escaping the mighty Dodoria alive, who believed he had put an end to the pair. Dende, their new native friend, gave his trust to these visitors. But trouble soon came sprinting back, as Frieza demanded his underling present him with the bodies of the Earthlings. As Krillin and Bulma discuss, there are only two places left that possess their Dragon Ball. The former knows he has to warn them of the evil to come. Dende then mentions he must go see the Grand Elder. It may be very far away from here, but he has no choice, causing Gohan to accompany the child. In the last village, the Elder consents Krillin's pure intentions, but spying on him, one of Frieza's men, who plans to alert his lord immediately. But quickly feeling his presence, our hero spots him in the sky. Confused how he was seen, he takes off, knowing there are too many for him to handle in a fight. But he doesn't flee fast enough. Capturing and restraining their guest, Krillin notes how lucky they are, as this guy is just one of the weak ones. But a pool doesn't let this deter his confidence, vowing Frieza will destroy them all. Ignoring him, Krillin notes the remaining three are much stronger than he and Gohan, and if this low-level warrior found the village, the others probably won't be far behind. Making his way back to the spot where he believed the Earthlings to have perished, Dodoria resorts to even searching underwater to find him. Bearing no trace, he figures they surely escaped after all. But without at least one of the pair, he knows Frieza will have his head, deciding to scour the globe endlessly at maximum speed. On their way to Guru, Gohan questions if they're getting close, but it will actually be quite a while until they arrive, so he suggests they take a short break. Ironically enough, mentioning it's not like anyone is looking for them. As the hours passed, Dodoria continued his searching, and after the rest, the boys quickly approached the Grand Elder, but would soon be found as Frieza's underling spots him. Though struggling to catch his breath, he promises this is where they die. Nail, I sense something outside. Go, go and see shouting for Dende to run while he slows him down. Nail arrives to shield both the children. Frustrated, Dodoria demands to know who this is now, before stating it doesn't matter, as he's just going to die like the rest of them. Dende calling out to his hero, explaining this is one of the evil invaders that killed everyone in his village, while Gohan can't help but notice the parallels between this man and Piccolo. 
one-shotting him. Nail puts a quick end to the skirmish. With the giant grin, the little Saiyan gets excited to see how strong this guy is. His friend explaining how Nail here is the personal guard of the Grand Elder and the strongest warrior on the planet. Though at first, appearing a bit cautious of the Earthling, he ushers them both to follow him as the Grand Elder awaits them. Back with Bulma, Krillin brings in their first Namekian Dragon Ball, while the very anime-eyed scientist tries to think of a plan. With the capture of the soldier in the village, that means there should only be three bad guys left. Cutting her off, a mentally defeated Krillin argues, with the terrifying power their enemies possess, the only safe option is to wait for Goku to arrive, which is still five days away from now. With the Space Lord, he announces to Zarbon his plan to call in the Ginyu Force, and much like Goku, they too will arrive in five days, and they'll bring new scouters with them. Since Dodoria and Apul decided to go missing, he's going to need his other right-hand man to seek out the remaining villages, while Frieza himself stays alongside the Dragon Balls. With no argument, Zarbon agrees. With Gohan, the Grand Elder thanks him for saving Dende, as well as deducing he's an Earthling. Before going on about how terrible all of this is, the Dragon Balls were supposed to inspire prosperity and wisdom, not bring about the destruction of his children. Making a suggestion, if they will aid he and his friends in gathering the Dragon Balls, they will resurrect Piccolo, which will bring back their own dragon, and everyone can be saved. The name Piccolo coming to the curiosity of the great leader, placing his hand upon the boy's head. He reads his mind to see the history of the Earthlings, also taking this time to notice how immense Gohan's potential is, stating he will unlock it. Hold on for a second, what? Feeling power within himself like never before, Gohan questions if he could do this to Krillin too, taking off to retrieve his ally. But before leaving, Guru would tell, his life, and by extension the Namekian Dragon Balls, will soon come to an end. So they will need to hurry in this endeavor. Less than an hour later, Krillin senses Gohan approaching, but in disbelief at his new strength. Explaining everything from Nail to Guru, he insists he has to come get his potential unlocked too. But with his focus on that Nail fellow instead, Krillin thinks that they have a new powerful ally, then maybe. Stopping short, the pair sense an incredible strength nearby, as Zarbon has found the last village. Though the leader tries to usher him away, assuring there is no Dragon Ball here, the villain doesn't believe him for a second. Already seen where this is going, Krillin goes to stop Gohan from doing anything rash, but the revitalized young warrior has a new sense of confidence. He thinks they have a chance to save the villagers. But arriving, they're already too late, as every one of them lie dead. Untying a pool, the soldier immediately fills Zarbon in on the doings of Gohan and Krillin, attacking Dodoria, and most importantly, stating they took the ball. Chuckling to himself, Zarbon wonders if that idiot Dodoria is also tied up somewhere in a village like this. Knowing this isn't good, Apul goes to sneak off to warn Frieza. But Krillin doesn't let that happen, spouting to the invader, he isn't as nice as the Namekians. And with a sinister gleam, Zarbon growls, this little brat here holds his own well. Seeing Gohan fall, Krillin knew this was more than they could handle, figuring here goes nothing. <laughs> Using a scatter bullet, it fools the enemy, leading to a direct hit. But of course, this barely manages to ruffle his hair, though Zarbon admits he is getting irritated. <laughs> Furious, Gohan demands to know how someone could do this to all these innocent people. Catching his breath, Krillin shouts for Gohan to come on. They need to leave now. But the child is set on finishing him. The other Earthling continues to argue that surely these guys are as indestructible as Vegeta. When Gohan reveals they're not. In fact, the pink one was killed with a single attack. Rising from his crater, Zarbon asks, Dodoria? Inquiring who managed to kill him. Effortlessly apprehending our heroes, their evil adversary assures he won't kill them right away, as he has a few questions first, wanting to know where both the Dragon Balls and Dodoria are. <laughs> Saying aloud, he'll roughen them up a bit first, before bringing them to Lord Frieza. <laughs> 